we are here. I'm trying to get this right. Hold on one second. Can you all hear me? If you can hear me, just, just say yes. Type it in. I was determined to get this word out. Good morning. Okay, good. We here for it. Just land, <clears throat> just landed about twenty minutes ago. So, good morning, Miss Geneva. Good morning, Damon. Tab. Hey, Tanika. Miss Cassandra. This morning, I'm gonna speak briefly about the power, the power of faith, trusting in the unseen. The power of faith and trusting in the unseen. And um, let's just start out with the word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, we thank you for making a way out of no way for us constantly. We thank you for being a very present help in time of trouble. We thank you for being the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we thank you for your word, which is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. We thank you for healing us. We thank you for giving us strength from day to day. We thank you for the faith that you've given us. And I pray that you would help us, Lord, to continue to walk in your word, continue to to seek you for all that we need. You promised to never leave us or forsake us, and we're gonna just stand on your promises. Somebody may be discouraged this morning, but I pray, God, that uh, you would give them a word, that you would give them the courage that they need, give them strength where they're weak, and let them know that this too shall pass. We love you, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. For we ask this in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Uh, as I was on the plane today, um, coming back from Florida, we just celebrated, uh, my class just celebrated 30, 30 years out of high school, and um, and it was just an amazing time. We all was able to get away and to uh, just catch up, just thank God for keeping us for all of those years. And um, as we were coming back on the plane, I realized that if one thing went wrong on that plane, or if one thing went wrong with the engine, or if one thing went wrong with the pilot, that things could have went left very quickly. And that wouldn't have been anything that we could do about it. And then I realized, you know, even catching a plane requires faith. Even, even riding a plane, it, it requires faith because you're trusting in something that you really don't know about. You're trusting the pilot to be able to fly the plane. You're trusting the mechanics who works on the planes to make sure that everything is operating the way it should. You're, tr you're trusting in things and you're trusting in people uh, that you don't know. You're trusting them to bring you to the airport safely. You're entrusting your whole life to the pilot and to the airline that you chose. And I realized that the Bible says in uh, Hebrews 11 that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And then it goes on to say that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Listen to what I'm saying. If you want to move heaven and if you want to move God, it's going to require faith. So let me just start out this morning by defining faith. Faith is often described 
in the scriptures as once again the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things unseen it is an unwavering belief in God's promises and even in the absence of tangible proof listen to me when you are walking by faith you are trusting God in the midst of truth that you are you are trusting God in the midst of evidence that is not tangible at the moment. Remember, you're trusting for God. You're trusting God for something that has not happened yet. Most of us are believing God to do something. Most of us are waiting on God to move on our behalf. Most of us are trusting God to get us from A to B. We're not there yet, but we're still trusting him through the process. And I need somebody to understand this morning that it is very important for us to not abandon the process. Don't abandon the process. Faith requires three things. And I'm going to give you these three things. One, faith requires trust. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will what? He'll direct your path. Not only does it require trust, but it also requires surrendering. Surrendering. Many of us struggle with surrendering to God. Come on, let's just be honest. It's difficult. To just surrender the whole self to God. Now, many of us will pick and choose what we want to give to God, but when it comes to complete surrender, this is where we struggle. You want to know why we struggle? Because a lot of times, God is requiring us to give Him the very thing that we want to keep. Some of us want to keep our attitudes. Some of us want to keep our dispositions. Some of us want to keep those things about us that we know ain't completely right, that God doesn't approve. Some of us don't want to let those things go because I think sometimes we are attached more to our deficiencies and our inadequacies than we should be. For example, somebody may know me as a person who Man, he got an edge, he got an attitude to him. But you know what? I kind of like that. I don't want to get rid of that. God says, no, I need you to surrender that. I need you to be meek. I need you to be humble. I need you to be approachable. I need you to be the type of person that if I lead you to another individual, I need you to be able to speak with them. I don't need them to look at you how you want them to view you. I need them to view you how I want them to view you. And so sometimes we don't want to surrender those things about ourselves that we want to hold on to. And God says, I need you to let that go. I know how they knew you, but I want them to see you how I see you. I want them to see the new you. Because remember, the scripture says that if any man be in Christ, he is what? A new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. And so some people want to hold on to these certain type of attitudes because they feel like people will respect them more. And I will go on to say this. Now, some people think that being a believer means that you're weak, means that they can walk over you. But that's so far from the truth. They, they, they try to walk over Jesus, but Jesus went in temples, turning over tables. No, Jesus wasn't going for that. You can still be meek. You can still be humble. You can still be all of that. But at the same time, you can still stand your ground as a believer. So, once again, it takes trust in God. You got to trust him through the process. Not only that, not only that, but we have to learn to surrender. Surrendering is more than just a song. We say, I surrender all, but we keep some. Come on. I surrender all, but I'm keeping what I want to keep. Turn to your name and just tell them, let go. Some things you got to let go. In order for you to get to the next level, God says, I require that from you. I want that from you. Do you love me enough? And what I have called you to, to let that thing go. God says, if you only just 
Take your hand off of it. While I keep my hand on you, then you'll experience elevation like you've never experienced it before. And so not only do we have to trust God, not only do we have to surrender, but we have to have a willingness to step into the unknown. Let me tell you something. God is not going to always give you every detail. He's not going to always give you every detail. You want God to give you plans. You want him to give you step one, two, three, four, and he's not going to do that. God says, this is a season in your life where I want you to learn to step into the unknown. Just like when he called Abel. He called him and told him, I want you to go somewhere. Where you going? I'll tell you when you get there. Just go. He was requiring him to step into the unknown. And some of us, the reason we cannot experience the better version of ourselves is because we're in the way. God says, I need you to step into the unknown. You think I'm supposed to give you the whole plan. No, I'm not going to give you the whole plan. I heard a preacher say this the other day. Sometimes God will show you the end before he shows you the beginning. Let me say that again. He said God will sometimes show you the ending before he shows you the beginning. And one of the reasons he shows you the end first and then he shows you the beginning is because he knows that in the middle is where your struggle is going to come in at. He wants to show you that you're going to succeed. He wants to show you. He gives you the vision. He gives you the dream. He shows you all of this. But then guess what? He doesn't show you what's in the middle. Because if you knew that it was going to be a struggle for you to get there, you wouldn't want to do it. And so he shows you that you're going to get there, but he doesn't show you the whole process. Because God knows that we are good at abandoning processes. Many of us are good at abandoning processes. So you have to be willing to step into the unknown guided by God. Let me say this one time. You got the when God shows you something, you got to stop. You got to stop asking people. Because sometimes the opinion of people gets in the way of God's will for your life. You don't always have to have a second opinion once you know that God has spoken. If God tells you to leave Chattanooga, you don't have to go ask your whole family what they think about you leaving Chattanooga. If God says go, then he expects you to go. And if you truly heard from him as you are in transition, God is going to provide every resource that you need. He's going to provide every avenue that you need. He's going to make sure that you have every minute, every small thing that is necessary for you to get from point A to B. God is going to supply that. But if you start going to ask everybody, your mama, your family, your friends and people that don't even like you, then they're going to get in the way of you hearing the still small voice of God. And many of us would be so much further along in life if we didn't go behind God's back and ask somebody else about what God had already revealed to us. And so... Um, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Now, what about the role of faith and salvation? Ephesians 2 and 8 says, it reminds us that we are saved by grace through faith. We are saved by grace through faith. Our faith in God's redemptive work in Christ Jesus is what brings us into a restored relationship with him. It is your faith plays an essential role in your relationship with your creator. Do you hear me? I said, once again, your faith plays an essential role in your relationship uh, with your creator. Faith is not just a mental concept, but it is a transformative force that leads us to accept God's grace and rely on his unfailing love. Do you hear me? Every single day, our faith should prompt us and push us to rely more on God and not people. God has been trying to pull us away from people for so long. I need you to trust me. I need you to rely on me. I need you to lean into me. 
God doesn't want us walking by sight because guess what? Sight always gets in the way of what God is trying to do. That's why I gave you the point. You got to learn how to step into the unknown. If you're not willing to step into the unknown, you will never know God the way you need to know him. You will never know him the way you need to, to know him. And then not only that, but we have to learn how to overcome doubt and fear. When you're dealing with faith, overcoming doubt and overcoming fear is just as essential. Throughout this journey, doubt and fear can cast shadow upon our faith. Do you hear me? During this journey, doubt and fear can cast a shadow on your journey. But watch this. Faith is not the absence of doubt, but it is a choice to trust God despite our uncertainties. Listen to this. There are some things that we all are uncertain about. But despite those uncertainties, I'm still choosing to trust God. Do y'all hear me? Despite the uncertainties, despite, despite those areas in life that I'm not sure about, I'm still going to trust God. Let me tell you why. Because I can't make it without it. If I'm having uncertainties in my life about my future, about my right now, about my not yet, then what good is it going to do me to not trust God? These are pivotal, pivotal moments in our lives where we need to trust him more, to lean on him. Because without faith, remember, it is impossible to please him. Now, some people feel that just because they have some doubts and just because they have some uncertainties, that they're not going in the right direction. Some people will make you feel like you don't have faith in God and that, that you're not as strong as other believers. No, having fear and doubt, that's human. Although God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of a sound mind, you're still going to have some moments where you doubt things. You're going to still have some moments where uh, you have fear that comes to try to overtake you. But watch this, despite all of that, I'm still choosing to trust God. Trusting God and walking by faith is a conscious choice. Now, if you ever want to experience God move in your life, start trusting him, even when you can't trust him. Let me say it again. If you ever want to experience the supernatural, and if you ever want to experience God on the level that you've never experienced him before, start trusting him in areas where you can't trace him. When you're looking around wondering where is God in this and you can't find him, but you're still choosing to trust him. Sometimes you just got to tell yourself, Lord, I'm trusting you. Sometimes you got to tell him, Lord, I trust you. I don't see where I'm going. I don't know what you're getting ready to do in this moment, but I still trust you, Lord. Because I know that if you are a part of this and if your hand is on it and if you're in it at all lord i can i can rest assured that everything is going to be all right i used to think when people said everything's going to be all right it was just a cliche cliche statement but guess what if you are a child of god it has to work out for your good and it has to work out for god's glory okay and so the next thing i want to talk to you about is walking by faith now, when you walk by faith, that means you live by faith. When you walk by faith, you are living by faith. And living a life of faith means actively applying our beliefs to our daily lives. Actively. That means every, every moment I get a chance to exercise my faith, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. If you want to experience God more then on a normal uh, basis, operate in faith. Operate in faith and let it become an active part of your life. Some people think that walking in faith means that um, when you want God to do something for you, you say, Lord, I have faith that you're going to do it. But no, that's just a momentary faith that you're trying to use to manipulate God. No, when you walk in faith, that means the faith that you have and that you exercise is a normal part of your life. That means every single day you apply this to your life. 
okay? You're not just trying to do it to get something from God. You want to know, Lord, I trust you. Even when I don't understand, I trust you. Even when I don't know what's going on, Lord, I trust you. And that's what faith is. All of us can use an extra dose of faith. And what's so crazy about it, God doesn't even require a whole lot from us. Sometimes all you need is the faith of a mustard seed. That's all you need. Lord, I need you to move this mountain. He says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, tell that mountain to be moved and it'll be moved. A lot of times, y'all, we just don't believe. We just don't have the faith to believe it. We, we speak it, but God knows our hearts a lot of times. We just don't, we just don't believe it. There's a whole lot of people, they can't get what they want and what they're asking from God because they really don't have, have faith in it. It takes more than coming to God just to get your request met. Those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so once again, when I got on that plane to go to Orlando and to come back to Atlanta, I'm in Atlanta right now, it took faith for me to get on that plane because I don't know anything about that plane. I don't know the pilot and I don't know the people who own Delta. I don't know nothing about them. I boarded the plane because I had faith that it was going to get me from point A to B. Everybody else that's getting on the plane, they have faith that that plane is going to get them to their destination. And so if I can put that much trust in riding or flying on a plane with people that I don't know, I don't know who on there, I don't know what they're up to, I prayed the whole time I was in the air. If I can trust riding that plane with folk that I don't know, how much more should I be trusting a God who wakes me up every single day, who clothes me in my right mind, who keeps working miracle after miracle for us, who keeps coming through, who never switches up on us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's always operating on our behalf and he's always putting us in a position to win. If I can trust riding on an airplane, then surely it should not be a problem at all for me to trust in a God who's been with me from the moment I was conceived to right now and tomorrow is looking pretty good. And so I know somebody is probably struggling in some aspect of their life. Listen, go back to the drawing board and ask God to give you the faith that you need to move mountains. Go back to him and let him know if you are struggling in your faith. Lord, I'm struggling right here. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. I don't know how to maneuver in this situation, Lord. I need you to give me the faith to trust you with it. Because if I'm resting in him, then the problem is no longer my problem. The problem is put on him. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He's trying to take the burden off of you and place it on him. But guess what? So often we hold on to it. I came on here this morning simply to let you know I'm at the airport. I was determined to get on here and to say something to God's people. But listen, listen, take that burden off of you. Give it to him. Let him give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Let him give you what you need. Take that burden off of you and give it to him. You have no reason to be walking around way down. When God says, bring it to me, bring it to me. Whatever you lack, God's got it. If you got a troubled mind, go to him. Go to God and talk to him just like you go to folk you know and talk to them about your problems. If you're gonna talk to somebody, talk to him about it because he can do something about it. The folks that we go to, man, a lot of times we can't, they can't help us. Go to God and let him fix it. The old, um, the old saints used to say, Jesus will fix it after a while. And you know what? I believe it to be true. He may not come 
when you want him to come. But one thing I do know, he's never late. He's always, and I literally mean, he's always on time. So I want to pray with somebody who may be struggling this morning. Um, and I pray that God will just infuse you with everything that you need to get through this temporary light affliction. That's all it is. It's temporary. This too shall pass. Troubles don't last always. And weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And so I want to pray with you. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you've given us. Not only do we pray for the people on this live, we pray for the people walking through this airport. We pray, God, that you would just move the way you move and that somebody's life will be changed in one way or the other. We pray, God, that that person who's heavy laden, that person who's, who's troubled and they got so much weight on them, Lord, they don't know if they're uh, coming or going. I pray, Lord, that you would lift that burden and that they would just give it to you, Lord. I pray that you would surround them with your love, your compassion, that you would remind them that you would never leave them or forsake them. I pray that you would supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory. I pray that you would just do what only you can do, God. We thank you for being a God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works within us. We thank you for forgiveness this morning. We thank you for cleansing. We thank you, Lord, for a renewed relationship with you, God. We thank you that every single day your mercies and your grace is new, God. We thank you for loving us beyond uh, measure, Lord. Loving us when we didn't even love ourselves, God. We thank you for being a very present help in time of trouble. We thank you, Lord, for all you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. We thank you for your healing power. We thank you that virtue is still flowing this morning. We thank you, Lord, that you are still making a way out of no way. We come to you, Lord, lifting you up because we know that if you be lifted from this earth, that you will draw all men unto you. God, have your way in our lives. Let us keep operating in faith and keep watching you do what you do best. We love you. We thank you for all you've done, all that you're doing, all that you're going to do. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray and we thank you. Amen. Listen, I want to thank you all for uh, being patient with me uh, and just giving me a chance to get settled where I can at least go live and say something to God's people. Uh, I'll teach anywhere. I don't care where I'm at. Give me a spot where y'all can hear me and it's, and, and it's on and it's popping. If I could have, I would have taught on the plane. But... Um, if you don't know Jesus today as your personal Lord and Savior, today is a good day to get to know him. Tomorrow is not promised to us. The Bible says that life is a vapor. You can be here today and you can be gone today. You know, so don't 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 play Russian roulette with your salvation. Um, and those of you who are saved, the Bible says work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Uh, that means that you have a responsibility to stay sharp you have a responsibility to make sure that you are staying in the way you know that you are walking uh upright that you are righteous that you are going to god even if you if you fail even if you slip even if you if you feel like you backslid and go to god and say lord uh i need to get this right forgive me of my sins and you know what he will never close his his arms on you he will always keep his arms open. He will always receive you. All you have to do is come to him. You know, so once again, um, the Bible says that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is no if, hands, and buts about it. You know, that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised his son from the dead, you shall be saved. You know, so... Uh, with how things are going today, if you don't see the signs of the end times quickly approaching, then you are blind and you need to ask God to remove the blinders off of your eyes, your spiritual eyes, so that you can see. Because if you don't see, I don't see how I don't see how you're missing it. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Pay attention to what's being said in the news. Pay attention to all of this stuff that God is putting right in our face. He's exposing the hand of the enemy, you know, and a lot of folk don't see it because they are blind. They have scales on their spiritual eyes. And I'm praying right now that God would just remove those blinders, that we will run to him for refuge, that we will run to him for refuge. But if you don't know him, today is a good day to get to know him. Because like I said, tomorrow 
is not promised to any of us. Today is the day of salvation. People are still dying. People are still getting sick. And guess what? People still need God. I don't know about you, but I need him every moment. I need him every second, every breath that I take. I need God. You know, so it doesn't matter where you are, what you're going through. God understands what you're going through. Listen, just go to him and be transparent with God. I wish we learned how to stop faking and just be real with him. If you're struggling with something, if you got an addiction, if you're struggling with sin, whatever you got going on in your life, just go to God and say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with this. I thought I overcame it. You know, I thought I, I thought that chains were broken off me. You know, I found myself back in the same situation again. Go to him and let him know what you need. God is not like people. He's not going to close the door in your face. He ain't going to chop you up. He's not going to put your business out there. He ain't going to do none of that. What he's going to do is give you the opportunity to get it right. That's what I love about the God that we serve. He's always, he's always ready and he's always willing to heal his people. Always ready and always willing. I don't care what you've done. I don't care how long you, you've done it. Go to God and let him know, Lord, I need a change. I need a change in my life. And I've tried to do it on my own. I couldn't do it. I've gone to people. They couldn't help me. You know, and God is so good that he'll let you try every person and every option you know outside of him. And he'll let you run out of options. And when you come to him, even though you come to him last, guess what? He still won't turn you away. He still won't turn you away. Unfortunately, some people don't make it to him. You know, but uh, you have that opportunity. You know, so walk in faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. And sometimes, listen, in closing, let me say this. When you're walking by faith, most often you have to divorce your eyes. If you're going to walk by faith, at some point in this journey, you're going to have to divorce your eyes. Because guess what? Our eyes get in the way of what God is trying to show us and what God is trying to do. Now, it's time for me to get out of here and to get on grooms. But God gave me the opportunity to come on here and to say what I needed to say or what he needed to say to the people through me. And so in closing, I love you. Those of you who are going to give, Tab will put all the information in there. Uh, let me pray us out of here. Father, we thank you for all of your people who came on this live today. We pray that you would bless each and every one of them. I pray that you would um, deal with every struggle. I, play, I pray, God, right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you will make a way out of no way for your people, those who have troubled minds. I pray for peace that surpasses all understanding. I pray, God, that you meet every need. And I pray, God, that you would uh, heal every heart every wounded individual i pray that you would do something to bring them the peace and the uh, solitude whatever they need i pray that you make it happen we love you and we give you all the honor the praise and the glory for all you've done and all that you're doing in jesus name we pray amen i'll talk to you all later love you